There are 7 billion people that live in a place so-called planet Earth. But have you ever wondered who we are, why we're here, and where we are going? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah be upon each and every one of you. Hi guys, my name is Fini and welcome to my YouTube channel. Just so you know, this is not my debut because I used to have a bunch of videos on this channel but I have taken down all of them so this is a kind of fresh start and today I'm gonna share a story of me finding something that every single one in this entire world has been searching for, i.e. the truth. But before I tell you how, let me give you a brief overview of how I used to be in the past before I completely transformed into a different person now. Back when I was a teenager, I used to live life just like everybody else. I was an ordinary girl who grew up in the suburb amidst modern society and my standard of living was the western world or western culture. Therefore, in terms of appearance or fashion, I didn't cover up or dress up like this. All I used to wear was just like any other girls, even sometimes it was far from modesty. May Allah forgive me. So yeah, basically I just went from Barbie to hijabi, so to speak. As for activities and lifestyle, I'm a former radio announcer slash news anchor. I also entered a beauty pageant, you know, the brain beauty behavior kind of thing. And I was really into music. I was fangirling. I used to sing and play guitar like Taylor Swift. Sometimes in a cafe or wedding or I just filmed it and posted it on my socials. And this channel was actually one of many platforms where I showcased my talent. I really loved to dance and party so I went to the club with friends once in a while. However, I was teetotal. I didn't drink because that's just not my thing. The only reason that brought me there was just the music and the dance. And speaking more of dance, in another way, I used to have some dance groups and we occasionally performed the traditional dance as well. And that's because I really love the cultural heritage and I'm willing to promote it. In a nutshell, I might say that I was a H quote unquote, and that's actually an abbreviation that stands for beautiful, intelligent, talented, cheerful, and humorous. That's how I used to describe myself on my Instagram bio. Embarrassing. So that was me before I found the truth. I was pretty much an average person who may be a little bit lucky to be given opportunities here and there. And I like to explore a lot of things because I thought YOLO. So I just did what I love without having any clue whether it was wrong or right. And I didn't even care because I made my own rules. And I got everything that I ever wanted, you know. The worldly things like spotlight, attention, compliment, achievement, and pride. And we all know that they are all just temporary, right? Unfortunately, a lot of people out there are doing the same. They're just living this type of lifestyle where they just follow their own desire, temptation, and society's standards. So I didn't mean to expose my shortcomings in the past. I just want you to learn from what I've been through. So just in case you're doing the same thing like I did or living the life that I used to live, listen, live it now. Because after I found the truth, I came to know that that was not the right lifestyle that we're supposed to live as human beings. Therefore, I've left everything behind since three years ago. So July 1st, 2018 was the night when I finally found the very last piece to the puzzle that I've been searching for years. You know, it was like the eureka moment of a very long journey. So I wish you've prepared your popcorn or maybe with a cup of tea to bear with me to listen to this very long story. I'm Indonesian born and raised. And if you've never heard about Indonesia, it's the third world country in Southeast Asia. I was born into a Muslim family. My father is a Muslim and he passed away last year. So please make to offer him. May Allah forgive all of his sins and reunite us in Jannah. Um, my mother is a Muslim, but she used to be a Catholic before she married my father. And that's actually another long story. So 
maybe I'm just gonna tell you in another video, inshallah. So I grew up in two different family backgrounds, which is Muslim and Catholic, or let me just say Christian. You know, growing up in interfaith family made me wonder and question a lot of things. So I'd started questioning things since I was a kid, but let's just skip my childhood story and fast forward to the age of 17. When I was 17, I had my first turning point where I left home for the first time because I had to move out, living far away from my family to start a brand new life as a new student in a university. And ever since that time, I started to have, you know, so much more alone time in my room to have some self-dialogues, some deep conversations between my head and my heart to contemplate and ponder and reflect and overthink everything. I try to find myself, I try to set my goals, my dreams and my future. Then I've got so many questions and I think these are the most fundamental and essential questions that we're all supposed to have. The questions about human, life and world. And I believe that every single one of us has ever wondered these kinds of questions in our life, at least once. So the questions like, who am I? Why am I here? And where am I going? What's the meaning and the essence of life? What's the purpose of creation and human existence? How to actually live this life? I mean, makeup has tutorial. How can life not have a tutorial? Are we really born to this world just to go to school, to graduate, get a degree, have a job, make money, get married, have kids, get old and then die? And what's the point? What's the purpose of life if we all are just gonna die? And by the way, what will happen after we die? Is there really an afterlife? Or it's just freaking nonsense? Now, how could people believe in different things? For instance, my extended family. Some of them believe in Islam, some of them believe in Christianity. Meanwhile, the rest of the world believe in something else. I mean, how can people believe that 1 plus 1 equals 2 and then the other people believe that it equals 3, 4, 5 and so on? And many more questions like that, so naturally I thought this was all not right. There must be something wrong with everybody's comprehension or mine. I was keen to know all of this and I need to find the truth. I once argued with myself since having this kind of thought somehow made me think that maybe I was just crazy because I'd never met a single person in my life who also had these thoughts and I was afraid to utter these questions to people because I, I didn't want to look stupid. So I didn't bother anymore. Besides, I was caught up in my new student life. However, in my last year of uni, I eventually started to take it seriously, finding the answer to my questions by doing some research and investigation. I started reading books because I didn't really like reading, to be honest. And in fact, Indonesians do not read. So I went to the National Library to expose myself to history, philosophy, and theology. I also watched so many YouTube videos and I listened to people from all over the world and I listened to various perspectives. I tried to comprehend what people know and say about the truth but nothing made sense. Most of them just followed their emotion rather than rationality. I even watched so many strange videos on YouTube, you know, the conspiracy theory, the flat earth theory, and another strange video. <laughs> Internet is just amazing. During my research, I came to a point where I thought I was an agnostic or I'd better be an agnostic because I did believe that there was a supreme being, so-called God or whatever, but I couldn't believe in any of all faith. Besides, I tended to dislike religion because I thought it caused world conflict and war. People fight because of religion and to me, all these religious teachings were just nonsense, including Islam. I was born into a Muslim family, yes, but to be a Muslim was not my choice. I myself never chose to be a Muslim. So just like the other kids in general, I merely followed my parents' beliefs, at least until I started to be able to think and question things. Now let's be fair. Isn't it weird when we just inherit our parents' beliefs without ever consciously thinking whether it's right or wrong? Then what if our parents believe in different things? 
Are we gonna say that all beliefs are just the same? Such a hypocrite. We can only believe in one thing. That's why we have to use our basic intellect. And I suppose maybe that's why it's pretty common if a lot of born Muslims today are being secular and don't practice Islam except in the month of Ramadan or in some special occasions like weddings and funerals. So it's more like only a cultural stuff rather than a religious instruction because they don't know what Islam actually is. They just blindly accept their parents' belief, just like I did. I was only a nominal Muslim. So I think we have to get rid of this big misunderstanding. We've missed a lot of things. So back to the story, therefore I no longer wanted to believe in blind faith and I chose that way because I didn't want to take sides or belong to any particular beliefs. I just wanted to be neutral, objective, and I wanted to open my mind and my heart to see everything more clearly to find out what was absolutely right. Then I searched something that was not man-made, something that makes sense, something universal and something perfect. And that thing must be the truth that we all should accept, no matter what. I did my research for approximately three years and during my research I encountered a lot of incidents that shook and struck me. They gave me lots of the missing puzzle pieces that eventually led me to the truth. Right after I graduated, I worked in a radio station and I met someone, a co-worker. He's my father's age and he's very eccentric and bizarre. He always dressed up all black like a rocker because apparently he's a real rocker. My first impression of him was bad, but after I got to know him better, I came to realize that, gosh, finally I met someone who had the same worldview. The difference was he already got the answers while I was still searching, but I didn't tell him or even anyone that I was searching. No one ever knew about me being agnostic and stuff because here in Indonesia, Atheism, agnosticism, or anything like that are not familiar. People would think that you're weird or insane for not adhering to a certain religion, and that would stay away from you, so I just kept everything subtle. I really liked to talk to him because it was like connecting the dots. So we started to have some deep conversations quite frequently about the human life and world, the topic that I was really keen to know more about. One day, there was this moment when we were talking about something and he ended up saying, I love Jesus, literally. And I was like, you're a Muslim and you love Jesus? How is that possible? Then he asked, have you ever read the translation of the Quran? Boom. Remember when I was starting to read books? I actually didn't know where to start, but Quran was on my list. I was just not there yet. So I said, nope. And he said, Try to read it. We kept doing our deep conversations up until I quit my job. And I learned a lot of lessons from him. He helped me answer a lot of questions and gave me a lot of puzzle pieces. P.S. He said he loved Jesus because turns out Jesus is the English name of our beloved prophet, Isa alayhi salam. So Jesus and Isa is the same person. He's one of the messengers of God. Not God or son of God or part of God. He's only human, just like you and me. We can prove it. The second incident was when my very best friend passed away. His name is Dira. May Allah have mercy on him. He was like my number one friend at the time, but I don't endorse cross-gender friendship here. I mean, it was a part of my past. One day, I got a message from Waldi, my number two best friend after Dira. He said Dira was hospitalized, but he didn't want anyone to know about his condition. So I was shocked. I didn't know what happened to him. So I went to the hospital with the other friends. And when we got there, my heart was kind of broken because I saw him sleeping in bed. Couldn't do anything. Couldn't even speak because his throat was filled with ventilator tube. And his family said he was diagnosed with pneumonia. A few days later, he passed away. And my heart was just completely broken. And that was the very first real heartbreak that I've ever experienced in my life. I mean, my best friend passed away at a very young age. I just couldn't believe it and somehow I couldn't accept it. It was like a dream to me. It felt so unreal and impossible, but that was the reality. 
I was just not ready. After trying so hard to accept and deal with the fact that my best friend was dead, I even tried harder to figure out what was actually happening to him. Like, where did he go? I had no idea. And this moment was like intriguing me to jump to the questions on the bottom of the list about the direction of human life's journey in this world. Where are we going? I had no reference about death or dead people, so innocently I just googled it. But I couldn't find a single satisfying answer. All those answers are just based on religious belief. I was skeptic of what's taught in the religion, because each of them has different understanding and explanation towards death. The reincarnation, the heaven and hell, so I didn't want to believe in them, but at least I've collected a bunch of information slash another puzzle pieces. The last one that I'm about to tell you is related to my personal life and you know, everyone has some difficult times in life and I was there, I've been there with a lot of hardships everywhere and every time I had to remember or recall these memories I'm gonna be quite emotional. I could say that 2017 was the hardest and the most complicated year that I've ever been through. So I got so many big problems in every inch of my life, from my family, career, financial, social life and everything. I'll tell you some of them and keep the rest remain private. After having a big battle with myself, I finally decided to quit my job as a radio announcer. That's because I had another goal and that's actually my ultimate dream job. But unfortunately, I couldn't nail it. I failed and I had no idea about the fate, how the universe works, how the destiny goes and what the future brings. Long story short, I got very depressed because it was my biggest dream in life and I didn't know how to face and overcome failure and how to deal with it. I really had no idea what I had to do. I was always number one at school, except in high school I started being rebel. I always made my mom and dad proud of me with a bunch of achievements here and there, trophies, and I never failed. But once I failed, I got very frustrated. I hated myself, my family, and everyone. I just wanted to be alone in my room, cry to sleep, and did nothing. I didn't even talk to anybody. I quit social media for almost a year and I disappeared. So I kind of ruined my friendship as well because they were looking for me. They worried about me, but they didn't know what happened to me. I didn't let anyone know because I was so ashamed. So I had no one. I was so hopeless and helpless. Day after day, everything was just getting worse and worse. I was lost and I attempted to commit suicide. Thank God I survived. In that phase, I just despaired. Nothing could even help me. So I tried to talk to the supreme being, so-called God. I talked to him very desperately. I said, God, whoever you are, please show me. And whatever you want, please tell me. I knew nothing, please let me know something. And that was probably the most sincere prayer that I've ever made. It's like you're drowning in the middle of the ocean and you just desperately grabbed anything in the surface but turns out the thing that you grabbed was the life buoy. And then I continued my research, then I stumbled across these two videos that I assumed was God's answer to my prayer. So I finally found these people, these intellectual people, who had exactly the same view and mindset, who also question things, who also try to find themselves, the meaning and the purpose of life, who also search for the truth. And the good news was they already found it. And I felt so relieved and I felt so happy because I finally met my people and obviously I was not the only one who experienced this confusion and in fact, this confusion is valid and I wasn't crazy. I'm gonna put the link of their videos on the description box and make sure you check them out. After going through a very long journey, they ended their research in a book. They gave them a valid, rational and satisfying answer to all of their questions with no doubt, no contradiction and with scientific evidence. And guess what? This book called The Holy Quran, which was very familiar to me. So 
I started reading it, the translation, and surprisingly, yes, I found literally everything in this book. One that I've never ever read since I was a kid. I mean, every kid who was born into a Muslim family knows how to read the Arabic alphabet, but most of us, especially me, I personally never knew the meaning and the translation of it. Where have I been? So, finally, I found the truth. And finding the truth means finding everything. I found myself, I found my purpose, I found my direction, I found my God, our God, His one true God. I found my role model and I found the meaning of everything, literally everything. This book just answers all of my questions and all of our questions. So finally, now, the puzzle had been perfectly completed. I'm gonna make a special video about what I found in the Quran and I'm gonna break it down to you to see how everything makes sense. The fact and the miracle that is jaw-dropping. And it's gonna be on the next video, inshallah. Because if I tell you now, this video will take an hour. So, you can subscribe this channel and turn on the notification if you don't want to miss it. Besides the Quran, Allah guides us by sending a messenger who gives us perfect example called the Sunnah, which means the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad And this Sunnah could be both action and words, also known as Hadith. And interestingly, we can trace the authenticity of the records of all Hadith. So Islam is not a made-up religion. It always has proof. More interestingly, this is my favorite part actually, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, taught us how to do everything in our life. He taught us how to eat, how to drink, how to sleep, how to walk, how to shower, how to dress, how to groom, how to walk, how to speak, how to do every single little thing in our daily basis, in correct way, in the best manner. I'm sorry if I have to say this, but this is very mind-blowing. He also taught us how to defecate and clean our private parts, even how to do sexual intercourse and that penetration stuff. Very detailed, very complete, very comprehensive. And today, the modern science has just proven that the correct way to do all of these things is the way that he taught us. So, do you think you've been doing correctly during this? Hashtag life tutorial. Not only the personal activities, he also taught us how to build a business, economy, even a country. And all of them based on the guidance and the revelation of Allah, not his own desire. So in conclusion, Quran is the words of God and Sunnah is the teachings of the Messenger of God. As long as we follow these two, we can be the best human being that we can ever be, or at least as we're supposed to be. Furthermore, we'll come back to our home in heaven and never go astray, inshallah. So we should be grateful for Islam because this is the perfect plus beautiful gift for us, the humankind. One thing to note, I was not looking for the correct religion in the first place because I didn't bother about religion. I'd never been a fan of it. I had nothing to do with it. What I was looking for was just the truth. But it turns out the truth is Islam, which happened to be known as a religion. Whereas it's actually more than just a mere religion. And there's no other option. It's the only option. And if I had to make an analogy to simplify and shorten this narrative, it would be Steve Jobs created iPhone, then he wrote the instruction manual and he equipped the iPhone with the one and only genuine operating system called iOS, meaning God created human beings. Then he revealed the scripture called the Holy Quran, and he blessed the human being with the one and only natural way of life called Islam. So that was it 
that was my rivet story and if you have frequently watched some rivet story videos then this one might be quite bizarre because this is not the story that comes from someone who lives in western hemisphere who has never heard about islam except from the 9-11 tragedy or does not have muslim family and friends or doesn't live in islamic society or neighborhood instead this is a story that comes from someone who was born into a Muslim family with Islamic upbringing. I even went to the Islamic primary school and indeed I have a lot of Muslim family and friends. Since I live in a Muslim majority country, even the country with the largest number of Muslims population in the world, in case you don't know. I was always close to Islam, I was always close to the truth, but I just didn't realize it because of my complete ignorance or maybe this world has gone too far from the truth. However, I didn't want to regret what has happened, what past is past. There's always reason and lesson behind everything. And Allah is Al Ghafur. He's all forgiving. He will forgive those who repent and do not care about anybody's past. So I just want to focus on what's in the present and the future. Fix what can be fixed and do what hasn't been done. I don't want to blame myself for being ignorant because basically we're all ignorant until we find Islam because it brings light to the darkness. Besides, a lot of Sahaba or companion of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, were also ignorant before they reverted to Islam. That's why the age before the Prophethood was called the Jahiliya age, which means the age of ignorance and somehow it reminds me of Umar radiallahu anhu he used to hate Islam he even wanted to kill our prophet by hating him but after he found the truth and reverted you can just google what he has contributed to Islam and I got one favorite quote from him people with the worst past can create the best future and it inspires me to create the best future not only for me but for everybody so what happened to me next was me reverting and I really like the term revert because whoever starts to accept Islam, to embrace Islam, to believe in Islam or to practice Islam, they're actually coming back to their original state. As the Prophet Muhammad said, every child is born upon fitrah. It is his parents who made them a Christian, a Jew or a Magian. Fitrah means our natural disposition. So if we were computers, we were born upon our default settings, which is Islam. It is our parents or society who change the settings. So there's a huge difference between nature and nurture. So July 1st, 2018, I swear I literally cried like a baby and I made again my Shahada or declaration of faith alone in my room, but this time I did it very consciously, wholeheartedly, and sincerely, without any hesitation. And finally, I know what Shahada actually means. Ever since that time, even though it was hard for me, it wasn't easy for me at all, but I tried to change. As I told you at the beginning of this video, that I have drastically changed to be a person that I've never imagined before. I'm still the same person with a better personality because I've changed the way I think, the way I speak, the way I behave, the way I see things and the way I socialize and interact with people. Even to the way I dress up as you can see now. After all, I try to adjust everything in my life according to the Sharia or Islamic law. So I reset, restarted, renewed, restored and rearranged everything and I only want to spend the rest of my life according to the Quran and Sunnah, inshallah. So guys, I hope you all could benefit from it, from the story that I've just shared. I'm not here to teach or preach. I'm not here to brag or impress. I'm not here for money or fame and may Allah keep purifying my intention. The reason why I'm telling you this is because this is the thing that every single one in this entire world should have known. Imagine if you discovered the finest restaurant ever that gives you the best food ever. Will you not recommend everyone? Will you just keep it to yourself? So that's basically what I'm doing right now. It's because I love you. I really do. 
and I want to let everybody know the perfection and the beauty of Islam. Unlike what's portrayed and made up by media, the big misconceptions that say Islam is terrorist, ignorant, outdated, backward, oppressive, misogynistic, blah blah blah. That's totally not true. How can Islam teach us to be terrorists if Islam itself means peace? How can Islam be the religion of ignorance if the very first university in this world was found by a Muslim? How can Islam be outdated if the modern science has just discovered a lot of things that have been written in a book that was revealed 1400 years ago? How can Islam be backward if the best human civilization in history, aka the Golden Age, occurred during Islamic Empire? How can Islam be oppressive if it gives us freedom from illogical society standards that never stop changing? How can Islam be misogynistic when it tells us to treat, respect, and honor women more than just like a queen? Now it all makes sense when those negative images and propaganda addressed to Islam. Whereas Islam is instead the thing that we all human beings have been searching for and this is what we all need. And I'm sorry for jumping to the conclusion but Islam is our natural disposition, it is our default setting, it is our original state. This is the right answer to every question, this is the correct belief and the straight path. This is the perfect ideology and universal system and law. This is the ultimate standard and absolute way of life. This is a clear guidance and complete code of conduct. And I think I need a whole day to explain what Islam actually is. But Islam is more than just a mere religion, as most of us think during this. Islam is the truth, like it or not. So thank you so much for watching and please forgive me for anything bad or wrong in this video. I had zero intention to offend or degrade or disrespect anyone or any kinds of groups. I respect all the other beliefs because Islam taught us to do so. My families are Christian. I have so many friends who are Hindus, Buddhists, Atheists, Agnostics, Lesbian, Gay, and we all live in harmony and we love each other. There's no issue. I am here just to convey the truth. And if you don't believe what I say, that's okay. You can just do some research and investigation on your own because there's no compulsory in Islam. But if you do believe what I said and accept Islam as the truth, then it's great. Congratulations and welcome back to Islam. And if you're in between, you still have questions and doubts, I'll pray for you. Hope Allah will guide you to the truth very soon. So go find some help, go to the masjid, ask the imam or scholar or the people of knowledge to help you answer your questions and lose your doubts. Or just simply read the Quran or you can just reach me out. All of mistakes in this video belong to me because still I'm human and nobody's perfect. But we Muslims are commanded to always strive to stay on the track, to prevent or minimize our mistake as hard as possible to try to be a better person every day and to repent if we commit sins, major or minor. As the Prophet ﷺ said, every son of Adam commits sins and the best of them are those who repent. Lastly, Islam is perfect and Muslims are not. If you want to know the truth, study Islam, don't study the Muslims. I'll see you guys in the next video inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bye. But during Islamic Empire. I'm going to put the link of their videos on the description. I'm gonna put the link of their I'm gonna put the link of their video on the description box and make sure to check them. I'm gonna put the link on I'm gonna put the link of their videos on the dip. I'm gonna put the link of their videos on the dip. I'm gonna put the link on. I'm gonna put the link of their videos on the on the description box. I'm gonna put the link of their videos on the depths. I'm gonna put the link of their videos on the depths. I'm gonna put the link of their videos on the description box and make sure check and make sure check them out. I'm gonna put the link of. I'm gonna put the link of their videos on the description.
I'm gonna put the link of their videos on the description box and make sure you check them out. This is not a makeup tutorial video, you know.